Hello, my name's Susie Johns and this course is called Learn to Draw. In lesson one, we looked at line drawing. In lesson two, we looked at negative space. And now in lesson three, I want us to look at sketchbooks. A sketchbook is part of the artistic process, a really important part. Um, but if that phrase sounds a bit grand, artistic process, and you're really only a beginner, I just want to reassure you that if you can carry a sketchbook around with you, a sketchbook and a pencil or something to draw with, then you're never stuck for an opportunity to practice your drawing. So let's start just at looking at just by looking at what a sketchbook is for. So here are three sketchbooks chosen from the vast selection on the shelf and one of the things I do with sketchbooks is I will take a new sketchbook on holiday with me and spend time while I'm on holiday sketching, drawing, sticking in, you know, collage. Remember that when it comes to sketchbooks every artist is different. A sketchbook can be a private place to express your thoughts it can be a place to practice techniques, try things out, test new materials. It can be a place to, uh, when inspiration suddenly hits you, quickly jot down an idea or plan a larger scale drawing. If you carry a sketchbook and pencil with you, whether on holiday or just in your everyday life, you can get into the habit of drawing as often as possible. Having a sketchbook with you at all times is a great way to ensure you'll make time to draw. And don't feel you have to make each page perfect. Scribble things down, stick things in, be spontaneous. Don't feel you have to complete a drawing, you can move on to the next page and maybe come back to it later. Anything you put in a sketchbook might be the starting point for an artwork today, tomorrow or in the future. And it looks like there's a few blank pages left in this one, ready for my next visit to Cornwall. Um, so this one, this sketchbook, is one I made in Scotland when I spent time with an Edinburgh-based artist friend, Nicky Sanderson. The location was Catiline, near Aberdeen, which is where the legendary artist Joan Eardley worked in the late 1950s, early 1960s. And uh, Nicky was artist-in-residence there, and I was privileged to spend some time... Um, working in the studio. There's the picture of the studio, the interior, um, a picture of the view. <laughs> uh, there's lots of sketches, a picture of me walking along the cliff top. So it, it's a wonderful record, it's a wonderful way to look back on that time and also you know to pick up that now, if, years later, to find new inspiration from it. So now you've looked at a few of my sketchbooks and seen what I use a sketchbook for, let's look at the, the types of sketchbook that are available. I'm not going to go through all the different types of sketchbook, but I'll just show you the ones that I think are very useful for carrying around with you. There are lots of different types of sketchbook available. I'm just going to show you uh, the sort that I like to use. This is a square format by C. White. So the square format, uh, that's something I particularly like. The page size on this one is 14 centimetres square. So that one will fit into a pocket or a small bag. This one's slightly larger by the same manufacturer, C. White. Um, it measures 19 centimetres square, or the page size is 19 centimetres square. So when it's opened out, the whole width of the page is 38 centimetres, which is great for landscape drawing. Um, and this one is a landscape format. This one's by Dale Rowney. And the page size is just over 20 by 14 centimetres, which is 8 by 6. Still a good size for carrying around with you. So here's a few smaller ones, pocket sized. This one um, actually contains watercolour paper, really good watercolour paper. It's um, more or less A5 size, which again is pocket sized, excellent for carrying around with you when you're out and about. Um, this one, similar size, um, my daughter brought back from India 
and it's made by a workshop out there. It's got lovely textured paper. Um, the watercolour one you could see was a landscape shape. This is the portrait shape. It's up, the pages are upright. And then every so often in this one it's, there's some lovely photographs. This one is slightly slightly larger, handmade book and with a fabric cover. Um, it's got thinner paper but it's nice for pencil drawing. So look out for something like that. And then of course the ones I've all the ones I've shown you have been hardback. Um, and bound, but this one has a spiral binding. And some people prefer a spiral binding because when you open out the book, it lies nice and flat. If you can't get out to buy new art supplies, a new sketchbook, or if you're keen on recycling, here's a way of converting an old, unloved book into a sketchbook. Sometimes a brand new sketchbook or a clean white page can seem a little bit intimidating. One way to tackle a new sketchbook is not to begin on the first page, but a few pages in. You can also prepare pages in advance, so that for those times you want to do some drawing but you're stuck for an idea, you will have 
provided yourself with some starting points. One thing you can do is to add collage. This can be as simple as taking pieces of printed text cut from newspapers or old books and pasting them over one or more of the pages.
when I start a drawing like this, I start just with um, sketching lightly the, the basic shapes and outlines, bearing in mind the negative space in between uh, and above their heads. So if you watched the previous video on um, negative space, you'll understand what I mean by that. Um, I'm actually going to close up the, the negative space in between them so I can get both both the heads onto the paper. But I'm going to speed things up just so you can get a quick idea of how a drawing like this develops. We're going to explore tonal drawing in a lot more detail in a future lesson. So remember that this is just lesson three of 11 lessons on this course. And if you've enjoyed this tutorial, please do hit the subscribe button below and then join me for the next lesson in the series, which is all about how to hold a pencil. Thank you.